Sauce Gang, and welcome back to the channel. Hot Sauce Beats here with another FNAF Theory. That is right, but no, 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 no. It is not by Matt Pat over at Game Theory. This time we're checking out FNAF because you guys let me know some crazy lore and theories coming out. Something about a mimic and how this is changing everything that we've known. And of course, this comes out after Matt Pat makes his final timeline. But we're checking out the video called The Big Twist of FNAF Security Breach by FNAF. I'm beyond hype for this, and I'm ready to learn ourselves some new lore. But before we jump into it, make sure you show FNAF some love by subscribing to his channel. And if you enjoyed my reaction, smash that subscribe button because it greatly helps. But enough talking, let's get to reacting and roll that bomb acid True. have no clue what the mimic is let's Recently, go Recently, the entire fnaf community has lost their minds over something called the mimic the fnaf community losing their minds ha, must be a first this new character has apparently solved a bunch of mysteries surrounding security breach and in this video i'm gonna explain new what animatronic? the animatronic is and my theory alert alert it's a theory do not cancel me it's a theory for how i think it fits into the game's story the mimic is actually something we've heard before in this franchise the first instance of the word mimic being used what? in a fnaf game was actually in fnaf world with the mimic ball if you use this ability uh, while yeah, fighting there's no enemies, way i would know that mimic any attack you made therefore sending that same Man, I'm, I'm ready like literally i'm so excited for this because every time the lore changes what it means is that map pad is not done so, you know, he's at 80 videos. Let's get to 100. I I'm re I'm here for it, dude. I'm ready for this Attack journey. A second time. But as far as the mimic we know today, there's actually two versions of it. The program version of it was actually introduced last month in the last Tales book in a story called The Storyteller, but more on that later. The physical mimic was actually introduced in the most recent Tales book in a story called The Mimic. This book actually doesn't release until May 2nd, but some bookstores are just putting them on oh. the shelves early, and that's how I got it. The mimic oh. centers around Edwin and his son, David, who was known for carrying around a white tiger plush. Who's Edwin and who's David? After Edwin's wife Fiona passed away while giving Fiona. birth to David, he was now a single father with little money. Edwin worked for Fazbear Entertainment as an engineer, building and fixing robots such as Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy for the company. The story states oh. that one of the first animatronics he created was a robotic vacuum cleaner. He then sold enough of the vacuums to start his own company, but his company ended up failing and being bought out by Fazbear Entertainment for unknown reasons. What? The Fazbear executive stated that Edwin was, quote, doing the right thing. Now, as a single dad who's low on money, he lived in an abandoned factory. He turned a portion of the factory into a makeshift apartment for him and his son to live in. One day, uh, that's a little sus. <laughs> and a little spoopy. Day, David kept asking his dad if they could go get ice cream. And Edwin had to say no because he was so behind on his work. He realized he needed someone or something to watch over his son and keep him entertained so he could devote more time to his work. He then built the Mimic, an endoskeleton running a software Edwin created called Mimic One. The the endoskeleton was programmed to mimic anything it saw. David loved the endoskeleton, and Edwin was finally able to get a ton of work done. The mimic even eventually had its own makeshift tiger plushie that it carried around, just like David's. Everything was great, until one day when oh Edwin God. was busy working, David chased after his red ball that was rolling into the street and got hit by a car, killing him. Edwin, so overwhelmed with sadness and rage, was only left with the mimic, who was still mimicking his deceased son. In a fit of rage, oh, wow. Edwin destroyed the endoskeleton. Bro, that would be like absolute torture, fam. This is like all of the FNAF lore and stories. It's all tragic and super sad, man. As, as, a, as a father, this this depresses me. It's so sad. Skeleton hitting it over and over again with a metal rod. The story skips ahead in time to a few months later. Edwin is missing and a group of Fazbear employees were sent to the abandoned factory where Edwin and his son lived for unknown reasons. The entrance to the building had double doors that locked behind you once you were inside. Now locked inside, the Fazbear employees were left to deal with the Mimic, who started brutally killing them one by one. The Mimic loved dressing up in disguises, using old costumes left behind by Edwin. The Mimic first used a gesture- Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why is the Mimic killing people? It wasn't programmed to do that and it's not mimicking that unless if it's mimicking it because 
the dad beat it. I don't know. Costume, then switched its costume to other characters, Dude, eventually killing off every employee by ripping off their limbs. The mimic was taught to mimic whatever it saw. So after that day where Edwin took all of his anger out on it, it now was going to do the same to anyone it came in contact with. So let I me gotcha. know if you've heard this before. So we've got a dad who built a robot for his kid. The kid dies with his death involving a car. Now the robot was then literally a robotic version of his kid. The dad then after the death of his kid pours his agony into the robot beats it up, and now the robot is an evil version of his now-deceased kid. This story is quite literally mimicking Henry's story. Edwin was revealed literally. to be the creator of the main four animatronics, something Henry also reveals to be the case. Small souls trapped in prisons of my making. We literally see Edwin's robotic vacuum in Henry's pizzeria in FNAF 6. Henry rebuilt his Whoa. daughter, Charlie, after her murder, which also involved a car. In the books, Henry pours his agony into the adult Charlie bot, who Afton then steals and turns into Baby slash Elizabeth. Baby lured kids in with ice cream, which was David's favorite snack. So if Baby really is the in-game version of the Mimic, is there in-game evidence to back this up? Well, let's look back at the first game Baby was introduced in, FNAF World. JC Jack on Twitter pointed out that the Mendo character from FNAF World could easily be a mix of the words Mimic and Endo. A character named Mimic was already established in the game, so that's not too hard to believe. But the Mimic Ball and Mendo also share one very distinct feature. The antenna the on, the on top the of antenna? both of their heads. This antenna can also be found on another character in this franchise, Baby. But not just Baby. The antenna also shows up on every animatronic we know that Henry created. Yeah, Henry As we created. know, the whole idea of Afton stealing the Charlie bot and turning it into Baby was in the Silver Eyes trilogy, which began releasing a whole six months before Baby was introduced in FNAF World Update 2. It was also Update 2 that Scott said he wanted to pull elements from for FNAF Into Madness. If you keep up with the channel, you already know that I think FNAF Into Madness is the games we are currently playing, with the BB World game and Security Breach literally being called Scott Into Madness in the game files. The name Into Madness came from Foxy.exe, where Foxy says, I do gotta say, so uh, I know you guys, uh, what's it called? I think the, like, the whole history of FNAF or something like that, FNAF by FNAF, reaction to that coming very soon. You guys have been asking for that for a while, but it's like an hour, hour and a half long. Um, but so that, I think that might be the next one that we do from FNAF, but this is the second one. And what I just got to say, I love how FNAF tells a story. He, he, the way he speaks, it's very deliberate. It's it's easy to understand. Um, he's got a good voice too. You know, it's it's easy on the ears. But the way that he edits it all in together, I mean, it's, it's super easy to follow along on a FNAF theory. Be sure your step through the heart of madness. This was Scott introducing the idea of a character entering the real world by driving the player of a minigame into madness, which is what we see happen to Vanessa in FNAF VR, and now I believe happened to Gregory when he played the BB World game. The character you unlock when you beat Foxy.exe in Update 2 is Nightmare Eon, the evil slash dark version of Charlie, which is quite literally what Baby is in the books. Not to mention in Security Breach, there's a secret room in the Endo Daycare that features an endoskeleton that only activates once you grab the Nightmare Eon plush sitting in front of it. I believe Baby, aka the evil version of Charlie that Henry built and then Afton stole, is the big bad and will be revealed to be the big bad in the DLC. I know that sounds insane, but stay with me. Now, I know all of you hardcore Mimic enjoyers are pressing X to doubt everything I've said in this video so far because of one very important thing I left out, the epilogues. So let's talk about them. If you don't What's know, epilogues? at the end of every Tales from the Pizzaplex book, there's an epilogue, okay. and all of these epilogues from every book are one coherent story. The epilogue in the Tales books also feature the Mimic. The story begins with some workers who were hired to clean up the old pizzeria we see under the Pizzaplex. While they were cleaning though, they received a delivery of quote, state-of-the-art animatronics that were for the Pizzaplex. These were presumably the Glamrock animatronics. One of the workers quickly noticed that one of the animatronics was destroyed, saying quote, well, they're gonna need another guitarist, referring to what I think was Bonnie. The workers had a lot of work to do, but one of them had a plan. What if these new animatronics could do the work for us? So he plugged his laptop into Bonnie and ordered it to take off the arms and legs of all of the endoskeletons laying around and throw them into a pile. And surprisingly, Bonnie did what he was told. Once he was done with the endoskeletons, though, he started ripping off the arms and legs of the workers, one by one, tearing oh, them apart. Wow. One of the workers escaped and told the guys to seal up the entrance with cement, locking Bonnie and all of the dead workers inside. Later on in the epilogues, a group of friends decide to go explore the same pizzeria the Bonnie animatronic was left no. in. Eventually, they get trapped in there 
with him, and he starts killing them off one by one. In the newest epilogue, we learn that the Bonnie Endo that was killing them was version 2 of the original Mimic Endoskeleton, and that Fazbear oh, Entertainment actually built a whole line of these Mimic Endoskeletons. And that's basically all we know so far from the epilogues. Oh, Obviously, what? this Bonnie Mimic Endoskeleton is a big metaphor for Burn Trap. And the big reveal is that Burn Trap isn't actually William Afton, but a Mimic Endoskeleton that's trying to replicate William Afton. Now What? Do I believe that the mimic we hear about in the epilogues is Burn Trap? Yes. But do I believe the story we hear in the epilogues is 100% how it happened? No. That wasn't the case for the epilogues in the Fazbear Frights books, and I don't think that's the case now. Here's what I think happened. So it seems that Tell in order to cut that. corners Tell on us. development, Fazbear Entertainment stole Edwin's mimic program and used it for their VR game. But when they scanned Mimic 1 into the game, the program quite literally got the spark notes of Afton's greatest hits, because that game quite literally spells out the story of Afton through the minigames. The program then created Glitch Trap, a new digital recreation of William Afton created by the Mimic 1 software. Glitch Trap was now willing to do anything to get out of the VR game and enter the real world. That's where Vanessa comes in. While playtesting the game, Vanessa fell under the control of Glitch Trap, now becoming his reluctant follower who he could control. After Vanessa gets infected, he orders her to make a bunny costume, just like him. She even starts mimicking his behavior, his wave, his shushing motion, his skipping. Glitch Trap then realizes he needs an endoskeleton of his own to occupy, so Vanessa gets to work on that. Vanessa then destroys Bonnie to use his endo for Glitch Trap. We see proof of this in-game. When we first meet Vanessa in the first aid area, she walks away into a gated-off room. This room is where you can find the duffel bag about Bonnie's last whereabouts and also Bonnie's leg. How do I know this oh, is Bonnie's wow. leg? Something that I didn't notice until recently is that these boxes are kind of stacked like they're steps. Like Steubel wants you to climb on top of them and examine the leg. So that's exactly what I did. And what I found is something that I've yet to see anyone else discover. As you can probably see, there is remnants of Bonnie's blue paint on the endoskeleton. Oh, there is. And it's not just in one spot, it's all over this thing. And if Vanessa is using parts of Bonnie's endoskeleton to help rebuild Afton, and one of Bonnie's legs is on this table, the other one is attached to Burn Trap. And I think it's entirely possible that Vanessa used parts of Scrap Trap's endoskeleton and some of the new and old endos that Fazbear Entertainment made. Which explains why the other Bro. leg doesn't have the same amount of toes as the Bonnie leg. Why would Glitchtrap want Bonnie? Because Glitchtrap wants to mimic William Afton. No other animatronic would make sense. After decommissioning Bonnie, Vanessa then put the Glitchtrap virus into the Bonnie endo. We see this in the FNAF AR emails when Vanessa isolates the virus into one place, aka into the Bonnie endo. Now, Bonnie all endo's that simple. Vanessa needs to do is get the Bonnie slash Glitchtrap slash mimic endo to Afton's body. She does this by using Glamrock Freddy to clear the path down to where Afton's body lived. The Bonnie endo, now with Glitch Trap inside of it, then quite literally takes Afton's corpse and puts it on himself. Which is why, what? when we see Burn Trap in game, Afton's corpse is on a newer version of the Bonnie endoskeleton. We also learned that Bonnie had special pointy fingers so he could play the bass, which is what we see on Burn Trap. So yes, oh, Burn Trap yeah! is not technically William Afton. He's the Mimic 1 software that turned into Glitch Trap that Vanessa then turned into a physical form. If you haven't noticed yet, I have quite literally contradicted myself. At the beginning of the video, I said that the Mimic was Baby, and now I'm saying it's Burn Trap. But like I said earlier, we find out that Fazbear there's multiple, there's multiple Mimics, though. Entertainment built their own versions of the Mimic endoskeletons. This is what I believe Burn Trap is made from. The OG Mimic in the story with Edwin and his son, I still believe is the Charlie Bot slash Baby. The Mimic that Edwin built is never described to have bunny ears. And if you remember, David and the Mimic both had tiger plushies that they carried around with them. And as much as people like to say that it looks like Burn Trap is holding a plushie in his arm, every other time we see Afton, his arms are at his side. And in this part of the cutscene, I'm just not convinced that's what he's doing. And if Burn Trap was actually imitating holding a tiger plush, that would imply the existence of Edwin, his son, and the tiger plushie in the game's timeline. Which I don't see being the case, since Edwin is very obviously a parallel to Henry. And in the epilogues, where the Burn Trap mimic is featured, it's never described to be holding a plushie or even looking like a 
it's holding a plush. Oh, One thing this I changes forgot to everything, about Chad. the Mimic is that when it was playing with Edwin's son David, they used to draw on multicolored sheets of paper, which is exactly what we see in the sticky note room in Security Breach. But to get to the sticky note room, you have to go through the sewers until you reach this weird structure. It seems that the Pizza Plex was built on top of not just the old pizzeria, but some other structure. Judging by the parking spaces, it looks to be an abandoned parking structure. But I think this could easily be the in-game parallel of the abandoned factory Where Edwin they lived. and his son lived in. Need more proof? The Mimic and Edwin's son also used to draw on multicolored sheets of paper, like in the sticky note room that is connected right to the structure. And above the sticky note room, we have a workstation with endo blueprints on the table, which mimics Edwin's workstation where he built the Mimic. The Mimic is also known for tearing off the arms and legs of anything it sees. And what do we see as we enter the sticky note room? Staff bot torsos missing all of their arms and legs. This all seemed like a slam dunk. But even with all of that, I was still having doubts until I realized this. One of the what? biggest things we know about Edwin's warehouse is that when the Fazbear employees entered it, the double, the double doors. doors locked behind them, trapping them inside. This is exactly what happens when you enter the sticky note room. The big double doors lock behind you, trapping you inside. Bruh. Also, like I said, I believe the original mimic was Henry's rebuilt version of Charlie. And in the source code, the doors we use to enter the sticky note Charlie room are door. titled Charlie Door. Woo! There are just way too many connections here for this to be a coincidence. And all of this is to say that I think my original theory for who lived in the sticky note room might actually be correct. I definitely think it's possible that a robotic version of Charlie occupied that room. Just to clarify, I don't think Edwin is an actual character in the game universe, and I don't think that's his actual warehouse. All I'm saying is that these connections are real, and I think we'll 100%. find out way more about what these connections mean in the DLC. My guess right now is that this connects to Henry and the Charlie bots. One thing I've been looking back at recently is the wall code in the sister location room in Security Breach, and what it could possibly mean. If this is Michael's room, let's just assume that Michael wrote the code. And since this room is featured in sister location, there has to be some connection to that game. And I believe that connection is the one time we hear Michael speak in this entire franchise, during his speech to his father. In the speech, he says that he put her, aka Elizabeth, back together. And I found her. I put her back together. And in the code on the wall, it says, Break and mend, I built the breath. They hunt now, drawn to life. But if Michael is only talking about Elizabeth, why would he be using they instead of she? That's because maybe there isn't just one Elizabeth bot. In the novel trilogy, Henry created four versions of Charlie, with the final book literally being titled The Fourth Closet. Now, let me point you towards the map we see in Sister Location during the Funtime Dude, Freddy this section. Is, this on this map, we see chat. the Afton House, Fred Bears, the Bedroom from FNAF 4, and the Plush Trap minigame, with each gray dot representing an animatronic. This is something that Rye Toast actually pointed out to me a while back. We see Fred Baron Spring Bonnie, the Nightmare Animatronics, and four separate dots with one in each closet. The four Elizabeth bots, one for each stage of her life. It's actually heavily hinted at that the mimic wrote the symbols of the wall code on one of the sheets of paper he was drawing with Edwin's son, solidifying the connection between the Charlie slash Elizabeth bot and the wall code. What Scott was trying to do with Sister Location is something that we never saw pay off in this franchise until now. I believe that this little girl is one of those four Charlie slash Elizabeth bots that Michael put back together and might have occupied the sticky note room. But like I said earlier, I still believe Baby is going to be revealed as the big bad in the DLC, or at least one of the four versions of her. Why do I think this? Well, last month in the fifth Tales from the Pizza Plex book, we were introduced to the Storyteller. Long story the short, story Fazbear teller. Entertainment built a big tree in the middle of the atrium in the Pizza Plex called the Storyteller. Inside the tree was an AI that had fiber optic cables that were connected to every Every part of the pizza plex and basically controlled everything. The AI what? ended up being the reason all of the robots started acting more aggressive, which is what we see in Security Breach. Edwin, who still worked for Fazbear, noticed that the storyteller was making everything worse. Because of this, Edwin decided to sneak inside the tree to see what was behind all of this. And what he found was quite literally a giant white tiger head. The same white tiger that his son and the mimic were known for carrying around with them. The white tiger was <laughs> running the same program that he created 40 years years ago, Mimic 1. Obviously, this giant white tiger head is a little goofy and out of place. And when I think of a giant animatronic head that's goofy and out of place, I think of the giant Freddy head next to the pizzeria under the pizza plex. The storyteller tree also had a bunch of black fiber optic cables connecting to every part of the pizza plex. And what do we find after we see the giant Freddy head? The blob, which looks awfully similar to a bunch of black fiber optic cables in a giant clump. So do I- 
the storyteller tree was actually a real thing in the Pizzaplex? No. But do I think it's a giant metaphor for the giant Freddy head and the blob? Maybe. If Baby really is the in-game version of the Mimic that Edwin built for his son, and the Mimic is represented by the giant white tiger head, then to me that screams I mean, that Baby is This is definitely a lot of, again, this is a lot of theorizing here though. I mean, the blob. we're talking that about symbolism insane, and- But we've seen this happen before in the Fazbear Frights series. Eleanor ended up being the big bad in those stories. And in FNAF World Update 2, the final boss looks like it's gonna be the giant purple geist, but really gets revealed to be Chica's magic rainbow. Something we see hanging in Charlie's bedroom in the Silver Eyes graphic novels. Now there's one more major thing we need to talk about. I think we can prove in Security Breach that the endos we see in that game are the newer versions of Henry's Mimic endo. As we learned in the story The Mimic, Edwin aka Henry was forced to have Fazbear Entertainment buy out his robotics company. And in my last theory, I talked about how in the FNAF 2 phone calls it reveals that Henry was the previous owner and that he lost the company. Yeah, we're gonna try to contact the original restaurant owner. I think the name of the place was Red Bear's Family Diet. Or something like that. What this story reveals is that Henry might have signed away the company, but he was still making all of the robots, which would include okay. the security puppet, which looks shockingly similar to the design of the Funtime animatronics, further backing up that the Funtime's designs were actually Henry's that Afton stole. If Henry really did build all of the animatronics we see in the games, that would include the toy animatronics. And one quirk of the toy animatronics is that they're sensitive to bright light. Flash your light at him from time Flashlight. to time. Flashlight! <laughs> Oriented with bright light. It would cause a system restart or something. Come to think of it, you might want to try that on any room where something undesirable might be. It might hold them in place for a few seconds. That glitch might have carried over to the newer models too. And so are the Glamrock animatronics. What are you doing? And what do we see hidden behind the arcade machine in Glamrock Freddy's green room? His matching toy version in plushy form. I'm aware that this video was insane, but if any of this theory ends up being correct, I will poop myself. But at this point, I'm just ready for some answers, whether I'm right or wrong. If by any chance Steel Wool Studios is watching this right now, please, release Ruin. Let's go, bro! <laughs> bro, what? I... I don't even know what to think, chat. I mean, that changes so much. It adds in so much stuff, and then it... It could also bring up the fact of... Why stop it there? What what else could be mimics? You know what I mean? I, so burn trap is a mimic. Does that make so glitch trap technically is a mimic too? Then because it's it's made by that program. But dude, this it brings up so many questions, and it it could change everything. Again, all these books, dude. Matt Pat, ah, ultimate timeline, done. Bam, new lore, new theory, new book. Chat, let me, seriously, again, you guys know more about this than I do. Let me know in the comments what you think, what you believe to be canon, what could be debunked. Because again, a lot of this, a lot of this was definitely symbolism and theorizing, you know, about things could mean something, but there's something else, you know, talking about the cables and the, the big Freddy head. I mean, again, that's all symbolism. That isn't even there it's symbolizing so i don't know this is a lot to take in let me know what you guys think about this whole mimic situation i'm guessing you know fingers crossed we're gonna be getting a new theory from game theory here soon because again this changes everything so um and i think i got a uh, another fun f reaction coming for you here very soon so keep your eyes open for that make sure you show fnaf some love by subscribing to their channel if you join my reaction please Help support the channel by smashing that subscribe and like button. It's absolutely free and it greatly helps out the channel. Enjoy the rest of your day and remember, it's easy sleep and make beats and as usual be kind of one another. That's all I got. Boom, I'm out. Come on, can I love? What a sauce gang? What a sauce gang?